Okay. So we just got a few people going onto the stream and uh, coming through. Hopefully you can all hear me well. If you can, please comment down a yes or a one. That really helps. And we'll get started. Um, a lot to discuss in today's stream. A lot to go through. Um, I am a bit nervous about September, so I'm going to talk about that as well and a lot more. So um, yeah, stay tuned and watch to the very end. We've got a lot happening here. Um, we've got a few comments already coming in. Excited. Can't miss this. Uh, they're all present already here. It feels great. And uh, a lot of people saying hello. So yeah, if you can all hear me, that'll be great. And uh, yeah, we can just get started and get straight into it. Um, as I did say, yeah, a lot to discuss. I'm going to talk about the Ethereum merge as well. I'm going to talk a bit about, about Cardano and also with XRP. A lot of stuff happening with XRP at the moment. So I'm going to cover all of that and much more on today's stream. And uh, yeah, if you have any uh, sort of uh, you have any requests you want me to talk about, anything you want me to talk about that's happening in the markets, also uh, comment down below with that as well. And it we, looks like we've gotten all good with the audio, so that really helps. And uh, yeah, we'll just get straight into it. So before I jump into the latest of what's happening with everything, I want to bring your attention to, I think this is probably what you call a bottom indicator uh, for Bitcoin. Um, and it's Elon Musk. Uh, working at McDonald's. Now, this isn't actually Elon Musk himself working at McDonald's, but it's actually quite crazy when you think about it. This is an AI generated image. So someone put a text image uh, generator, they created this and uh, absolutely crazy when you think about it, that they managed to create an image like this. And you've seen the memes recently about people creating these sort of things. And it's, you know, it's a bit funny and that's, you know, it's fun to see these sort of things because people can make any sort of uh, image these days but that's the other thing is that they're getting smarter they're getting better getting better quality images and as much as this is really funny and i think it is really funny um that it is a bottom indicator for bitcoin the fact that elon musk is working at uh, mcdonald's it's uh it's a big thing it's a big thing because um you know the, the higher quality they get what's happening uh with what's happening you know, in 10 years time with the with the way it's going to go so uh you know anybody could type anything that's the crazy stuff but uh yeah just thought i'd leave that with there with you guys there so Anyway, this is what's happening with the market uh, for today. So Bitcoin's price is coming in at 21,600 for the time being. If we just do a little quick refresh on that and also the chart as well. I'm going to go through a bit of technical analysis on this. Um, you know, as we can see, the momentum of Bitcoin has started to slow down, um, especially over the past few days. Um, as you can see, I'm currently on the daily time frame for Bitcoin's price. We had that weekend dump back in uh, June of this year, and uh, that was sort of a crazy, crazy moment where Bitcoin's price just wicked down to 17,500. And ever since then, we've had a bit of a recovery and we've been creating high lows, which is good to see. But again, that recovery is slow and it continues to be so as well. Um, I I'm not particularly confident for September. I'll go on to my reasons in just a second. As much as the Ethereum merge is happening in September, and I'd love to see that. We all love to see that. Um, going from a proof of work to proof of stake, much easier on the Ethereum's network and much easier for it to be scalable, which is all we want to see at the end of the day. It is also overshadowed by what's happening with the month of September and the historical price action for uh, Bitcoin and for crypto in September plus everything else that's going on in the world at the moment. We're in a moment of a living crisis, energy crisis, so many crises happening at the moment, which is affecting the market, it's affecting the stock market, and which is also affecting uh, crypto as well. So we've got about 70 people watching right now. Uh, it's great to see. Um, already started about three minutes ago. So we're going to go for about an hour today and uh, talk about everything that's happening in the market. So we're going to talk about what's happening with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, XRP, and much more. So yeah, Bitcoin's price, I think we are starting to lose a little bit of momentum. I think we could be seeing another recovery pump to around sort of 23,500. Trying to find a close um, at that area where we saw yesterday's or actually the 19th of August's open. And then I think from there, we could be seeing a sub 20k Bitcoin in the immediate short term. And I think September will be part of the uh, the reason for that. So um, yeah, this stream is called the crypto or Bitcoin and crypto events, uh, how it could change forever or Bitcoin and crypto events you know, could change forever and a bit of market analysis in there as well. So yeah, September, it's, it's not looking good. Historically has been a very, very bearish month, as you can see all in the red there uh, for September. This is a Bitcoin monthly returns chart since 2013. And yeah, absolutely crazy, crazy returns overall. But for September, not the case. And even when we've had a bullish few months here and there, um, you know, for 2015 and 2016, it looked good quite then. But, uh, you know, 6% and 2% compared to what we've seen in the past for Bitcoin's price, even in 2019 and also uh, 2020, 30%, 52% in some of these months. 
back in 2013, 450% returns. You're not going to be seeing that again anytime soon. So um, yeah, September is a historically bearish month for uh, for Bitcoin. So we're going to go through a few comments here. Uh, again, uh, a few welcomes here. So thank you very much. Uh, comment down below where you're from in the world right now. Um, very interested to hear where you guys are from. It's always good to see people all over the world who are part of the Crypto Busy family. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and join the Crypto Busy family today. If you like the video, if you like the stream, make sure to like, leave a like. It's very much appreciated. And if you find this very useful and you want your friends and family to see it, please give it a share. It's very much appreciated. So yeah, welcome back with the new session. Yeah, any updates on ETH? I am going to go through the updates on ETH, guys. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening with that and I'm going to cover that in today's stream. Um, you know, Bitcoin death. I don't think we've seen the death of Bitcoin. It's been called dead so many times over the past few years. I don't think it's been the case anymore. Um, but again, uh, just absolutely insane what we're seeing right now with Bitcoin's price. Bull run, that's what we need more right now. Yeah, we would have to see a, a bull run. But in crypto, to survive in crypto, you have to appreciate uh, the good times and then also you have to appreciate the bad times as well. And by appreciating the bad times, you make good use and appreciate the good times even more. So that is also super important. Um, you know, ex you know, when things go up, they also have the tendency to go down. Um, and, and also that mantra of this too shall pass. So when things are going really well, you're thinking everything is, is really good. That too shall also pass. And we'll have a bad moment when everything's going bad and everything's like a red light and you, you can't go anywhere. You know, that too shall also pass as well. It's the same with inflation. It's the same with the stock market. It's the same with crypto. So that is also super important as well, guys. Um, so uh, what is the reason from, uh, for the dump for 25K? I think it's just the, the ultimate uh, situation what we're in right now of Bitcoin's price losing its momentum, trying to regain those levels, trying to get back up to $30,000. It just doesn't have the momentum at the moment. If you have a look at the RSI, if you have a look at the MACD at the moment, it's not pointing towards Bitcoin going to these sort of crazy, crazy levels in a short space of time. And then also, as I mentioned earlier, that sort of historical bearish month for Bitcoin, that is also super important. Um, okay. Love from India, watching from China, Pakistan, Yorkshire, Nepal, Pakistan again, Romania, New York, Iran, Singapore, again, India, New York again. Amazing guys. All over the world. The Crypto Busy family is worldwide, of course. So uh, no, it's great to see. Um, are we going to be seeing a $17,000 Bitcoin again? I think it's possible. I think we could be seeing a $17,000 Bitcoin again, trying to find that sort of area of support. We've tried to find a few areas of support for Bitcoin's price over the past few uh, past few months, really. But um, as you can see, from around sort of June onwards, um, I, I would say that sort of level of around sort of 18,000, nearly 19,000 is sort of an area of uh, local support but not also historical level of support. $20,000 is a key psychological level. So a psychological level is anywhere where you think of a round number, sort of 20, 25, 50. Whenever you sort of see Bitcoin's price in the news, that's usually a key psychological level because it's sort of a big impact. So Bitcoin's price has just gone past $50,000. It's just gone past $100,000. That is a key psychological level for Bitcoin. It is when, the, you know, see the mass media talk about it. And that's when you sort of see uh, people see, oh, hang on a second, what's happening with Bitcoin's price? But for the people who are watching it every single day, like us watching it right now, uh, key levels can be a little bit different and they can be and they can also differ to the psychological levels themselves so you know a, a key level right now that i'm looking for is again that sort of 18,500 17,500 as well these are levels you're not really going to see in sort of the, the mainstream articles the mainstream articles you're going to be seeing you know the 50,000 100,000 200,000 so hopefully that clears that up as well um okay hey tom nice to meet you again uh tell us more about ethereum 2.0 yes i'm going to talk about that um, yeah, a lot of stuff happening with ethereum so i will talk about ethereum as well um, a lot of people are excited for this ethereum merge it's happening in 20 days time um, and 11 hours 40 minutes and 36 seconds so it's really people a lot of a lot of excitement around this at the moment so i will cover that and i'll give my thoughts and opinions on what's going to be happening with big with ethereum's price and how that's also going to affect the rest of the market have we already priced in the ethereum merge have has you know the, the price action we've seen with through ethereum in the immediate short term has that already been priced in for what's going to be happening uh, later in september so we'll cover that as well costa rica and um, what else is there australia south africa yeah worldwide it's great to see this guy so thank you very much to each and every one of you who watches crypto busy we put out a video every single day so it's uh we very much appreciate you guys so uh yeah very much appreciate it so um, yeah, a list of old, good old coins to buy now. Again, we're not financial advisors. This is not financial advice, but I will go through some old coins that I'm looking into at the moment. 
and a dip is good for buyers and yeah a pump is also good for sellers as well so just be aware of that guys waiting for dips that's a good thing to wait for wait for dips load up on alts if you if you want to do that if that's your you know if, if that's your strategy then go for that um okay so ethereum let's talk about ethereum guys because there's a lot of stuff happening with ethereum there's a lot of hype around it recently as well so i want to discuss that in today's stream so um yeah just talking about what's happening recently let's get all the right articles up here um so i've got an article here from watcher news talking about ethereum foundation announces the final date for the much awaited merge and also ethereum bug bounty rewards jump by four times ahead of merge upgrade and then also from vitalik here talking about people continue to underrate how often cryptocurrency payments are superior not even because the censorship resistance but also uh, because it's much more convenient so there is that convenience side to it big boost to international businesses charities um, and sometimes even payment systems or payments with countries so he talks about some good points here and i think i want to break that down into what's happening with ethereum and how it's having a massive impact on the world today especially right now so the ethereum merge what is the ethereum merge well ultimately it's going from a proof of work to a proof of stake with a proof of work, you have to have validators who validate transactions on the blockchain. So when you hear, you hear about miners uh, mining Ethereum or Bitcoin, when they mine a piece of Bitcoin, when they mine a piece of uh, Ethereum, usually more or less they're validating a transaction on that blockchain. So it's a way of validating block, um, you know, transactions on a blockchain. Uh, now, when it comes to rewards for miners, you know, if they validate it and it's all good, it takes a lot of computing power today, um, then they get rewarded with a bit of Bitcoin and a bit of uh, Ethereum if they're mining you know, their respective ones. So back in the day, you could easily mine bitcoin you could mine ethereum on like your your laptop or your computer and you can still that to this you know still do that to this day um but nowadays it's a massive massive operation to mine bitcoin to mine ethereum and it requires a lot of capital expenditure to put up the amount of energy costs that's involved and then also on top of that with the amount of um items you need to mine bitcoin to mine ethereum you know in some cases there can be football stadiums size worth of of a bitcoin mining farm of ethereum mining farm and it's massive so if you have that which is already you know we're talking in the millions of capital expenditure you also have to take into account the energy crisis at the moment with the cost of fuel and energy and that is a big thing that's a massive impact on miners so that is also a big thing as well so this couldn't have come at a better time from going from a proof of work to a proof of stake because by doing that you take a lot of pressure for people validating transactions on a blockchain going from proof of work to proof of stake when you go to proof of stake again this is very high level stuff i'll talk about this in another video in much more detail proof of stake is where you have validators who stake bitcoin or ethereum itself in this case would be ethereum and they hold it so the higher amount of ethereum you hold the more you can stake the more you have uh, you know sort of an impact on the blockchain itself now i'm hoping that with this particular type of staking anybody who holds any type of uh, any amount of ethereum um, are able to validate transactions and that is a big thing because you get away from all of that capital expenditure from the amounts of uh, you know servers you need from the amounts of um, I think it's uh, GPUs as well that you need as well so there's a lot of stuff that you need to have and it takes away from all of the uh, you know the energy crisis that we have at the moment so it's a big thing as well going from proof of work to proof of stake and that is why you're seeing uh, this hype because it's much easier for the blockchain to be scalable to go from sort of a small transaction blockchain to a large transaction blockchain and what I mean by that is large transactions in terms of the size of uh, dollars you're transferring from one place to another and then on top of that as well, um, many people are using that blockchain. So, you know, right now we live in a world where about, I think it's in the hundred millions who know Bitcoin and also know, you know, know cryptocurrency and they utilize it um, and they use it from time to time. They either buy it or they actually, you know, use it from time to time. That's a cool thing. And I think it's about sort of a hundred million. You know, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but if it's, if it's any lower and any higher, do comment down below. But uh you know it's actually not that many compared to how many people are out there and also how um it has the opportunity to be much greater and much more so i think that, again as i said this has come at a, a really good time to go from proof of work to proof of stake because of the scalability and because i think also in the future we're going to be seeing a lot more people companies potentially also countries as well utilizing ethereum and ethereum's blockchain um and that is where you're going to need uh, the scalability power going forward so I just wanted to cover that with you guys uh, with Ethereum's merge. So that's why it's so big. That is why people love it. And uh, that's why there's that hype around it. Now, 
here's my thoughts and opinions what's happening with ethereum's price so let's just bring up ethereum's charts just briefly and talk about it in this video so here's ethereum's chart right now currently trading at 1700 it's amazing to see you love to see it and um you know it's had a bit of a recovery <clears throat> a bit more of a recovery compared to bitcoin so that's also good to see um and, and that's also because of the fundamental news of the ethereum merge but again a famous phrase you'll keep on hearing especially in crypto is buy the rumor sell the news and right now in my opinion we're going through the buy the rumor phase of big of ethereum's uh, price action and then by the time we get to september we're going to be seeing a bit of a, a phase of the selling the news so we the sell the news phase and that's where you're going to be seeing ethereum's price affected by that so even though there's a countdown to this and many people can be thinking oh it's going to go to three thousand dollars it's going to go to five thousand dollars that's usually not the case. And I've, I've experienced this many times in the past with, uh, you know, the sort of a buy the rumor, sell the news events. Um, so, for example, with XRP and how they got sued by the SEC, um, the rumor was is that you know, things are happening. It's going to be you know, not, not so good for XRP's price, potentially could be sued by SEC. It did pump and then, but, you know, it did sort of by the time the SEC sued and they announced that uh, on on uh, on the news, that is when the XRP's price tanked and that wasn't good at all. So that is also something to be aware of, again, when it comes to uh, price action. So right now, again, you know, it is following closely to what's happening with uh, Bitcoin's price action, again, forming those lower highs, which is we all love to see, but again, still losing momentum because of Bitcoin's price action. So we are still affected by what's happening with bitcoin's price um and even you know a lot of stuff happening with uh you know with and even though a lot of stuff is happening with uh bitcoin's price action and independently with ethereum's price action as well and also the ethereum uh foundation still it is still closely correlated to bitcoin's price action so i just wanted to cover that as well because that is also super important when talking about that so Ethereum's price action, we could be seeing Ethereum go up to potentially $2,000 before this Ethereum merge uh, actually happens, which again is in 20 days time. But I guess I think from that, we are going to be seeing a bit of a downturn in price. And then I think in the future, that is where we're going to be seeing um, you know, the good price action of potentially $5,000, $10,000. But that's not going to happen this year. It might happen next year, but I think more likely will happen in 2024. So these sort of crazy price predictions that people are talking about, it's going to take a bit of time. It's not going to happen tomorrow, uh, next week, or even next month. It's going to take a lot longer than that as well. 107 of you watching right now. So appreciate each and every one of you who are watching the stream. Uh, very much appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'd love to discuss a lot more. So I'm going to discuss a bit of Ethereum. If you have any questions about that, please comment down below uh, anything you want to talk about a bit more uh, when it comes from uh, uh, when it comes to ethereum so comment that and then also i am going to go into into cardano in just a second so stay tuned for that as well someone's saying they're watching from the moon <laughs> that's great to see up in the moon base uh what else we get ethereum is on the up and it seems today yeah again you know ethereum's price will continue to rise but i think eventually um, it will be impacted by the news. It's the same thing last year with EIP fifteen fifty nine, where in some cases Ethereum can be in a, Ethereum can be in a deflationary model. So that is where um, fewer amounts of Ethereum is being mined compared to uh, what is available in terms of its uh, supply. And so it's a simple supply and demand uh, model where uh, Ethereum's price, um, if it stays the same, if the demand stays the same, or if it goes up just a little bit, then the price tends to go up a bit more. So that is also what's happening with that as well. Okay. Um, yeah, Cardano. Um, I wanted to br briefly discuss what's happening with Cardano as well, because there's another network upgrade that is happening. And also it's affecting the rest of things as well. So whenever Ethereum does well, so do most of the other altcoins. If you have a look at what's happening with um, the crypto markets, again, Ethereum's uh, merge is affecting the altcoins and will continue to affect the altcoins as well because most altcoins that are out there are built on top of the Ethereum blockchain. So whenever you see, for example, let's uh, sort of bring an example. One example I can bring off the top of my head is Utrust. So Utrust is currently ranked 340, um, currently trading at 12 cents. And as you can see, the contract there is Ethereum. Okay, so it's built on top of the Ethereum blockchain. Um, if I could try and give another example, let's take ApeCoin, for example. Again, look, it's Ethereum. So built on top of the Ethereum blockchain. Um, I just want to give one more example just so I can you know, show you the, the power of three. Uh, let's take a stablecoin, for example. Again, is also built on top of and can be used and transacted over the Ethereum blockchain, which is also super important as well. Um, but then you get other altcoins that can be um, 
interchange between different blockchains such as Avalanche and then you also got Tron, uh, Binance Chain as well. But the most popular one out there is Ethereum. So by default, usually more or less, um, when Ethereum does well, so do the rest of the altcoins. And, and that is what I want to make sure that I mentioned in the stream as well. So Cardano, as you can see, it is built on top of the Binance smart chain. But again, it's closely related to the ERC20 blockchain, which follows closely the, um, you know, follows closely how the Ethereum blockchain looks like. So Cardano right now are currently trading at 46 cents of a dollar. There is the uh, network upgrade that's happening very soon. Um, and I just want to talk about that as well. So the Vasil hard fork. Will it be a turning point for Cardano? So just to briefly go through this, um, to examine the potential impact, it's necessary to first break the town, the technicals of this. So there's a lot more information out here. Again, I'll leave this article to you guys uh, so you can check it out for yourselves in much further detail. Um, but it aims to facilitate more access to information that's stored on the network without worrying the overall churn associated with recreating UTXOs. Again, I'll, I'll uh, research that myself effectively what this um, upgrade is uh, trying to do and solve is a lot of the um, uh, snagging issues so you know when it comes to bloating when it comes to a slower transaction speed um, that is also something that is important for a network upgrade so usually when you see a network upgrade they're improving what's happening with the transaction speeds and also the scalability and cardano is a great example of where if a network upgrade is successful, then also at the same time, um, it works out to be well uh, for the price action of uh, Cardano, which is also super important. So I want to cover that as well. Um, okay, let's go through some more comments here as well. I just want to comment down below. Uh, yeah, so if you have any comments that you want to uh, uh, talk about, anything you want me to discuss, I'm more than happy to discuss that in today's stream. Anything uh, within reason, of course. Okay. Um, also, by the way, it should be linked down in the description below. Um, Bit, uh, BitGet is an exchange that uh, we'd like to use recently. Um, so I just want to make sure that I've given, uh, given enough time for them as well. Get, uh, BitGet is an exchange we have partnered with recently. And um, yeah, they have their own cryptocurrency exchange. They have fast transaction speeds. Our link should be down in the description below. So do check it out for yourselves in much further detail. They only the exchanges here. So uh, BitGets. I bet get token. That's actually big gets. gets. Yeah. So the exchange itself. Um. Yeah. They have a lot of pairs on there on the exchange, and uh, it's fast growing as well, which is great to see. Um. So you can see the website here. Um. And again, our our affiliate link is linked down in the description below. So do make sure to check it out for yourselves in much further detail. Um. And you know they have again a lot of pairs that have good liquidity. And uh, yeah, it's also possible now to be in the United States. So if you're in the United States at the moment, you can also sign up. So there's many exchanges out there that are unable to operate within the United States because of security laws and other things as well. Um, so that is also super important. So if you want to get a, a sign-up bonus of around sort of $4,000, you can also use our link down in the description below there. Um, and BitGet, again, it's an exchange that is based um, in, I believe, I don't know where it's based exactly, but it can operate within um, the United States and you don't have to use uh, a VPN as well which is also an advantage and uh, you don't need to use KYC as well which is also again an easy way to access and get involved into BitGet so that's BitGet uh, I believe it'll be linked down in the description below so make sure to check it out as well a lot of good stuff so keep your eyes peeled for that and uh, we'll just get to it with other content so Cardano yeah I think you can also get that on, on BitGet as well so uh that is also super important. But yeah, Cardano's uh, uh, network upgrade, I think, is going to be big for what's happening in the future. So um, whatever you may see, be, or whatever you may be seeing uh, at the moment in the news about Cardano and um, how energy efficient it is, um, that is also going to be a big thing. But um, yeah, scalability and also uh, transaction speeds is going to be a big thing. And that is essentially what the Vasil network upgrade is there for. Um, so yeah, this is an interesting article I saw here. It's about apparently Cardano is more energy efficient than YouTube, PayPal, and also Netflix. So this is the infographic talking about it in much further detail. This is the energy consumption. Apparently, for, this is according to Cardano Daily. Um, and you can see here that, uh, yeah, Cardano, proof of stake. I believe that's what it uh, is uh, standing or stands for. Look at that, 0 0.00. And this is terawatts again, or terawatt hours. Um, so still a lot, but... Uh, Again, not as much as compared to others out there. So YouTube right now is apparently quite heavy on the energy consumption. Um, but there you go. I'm sure there's I'm sure there's uh, energy efficient ways of going around things. But uh, it's interesting to see where things are going. So do comment down below uh, your favorite 
cryptocurrency. I would like to know your favorite cryptocurrencies at the moment. Um, okay, I'm going to go through some of uh, your comments here. Uh, impact on gas fees for Ethereum. Yeah, I do think it will have an impact on gas fees. I think last year's uh, network upgrade with the EIP-1559, that was a part of that. It helped um, with gas fees and will continue to help with the gas fees as well. Um, and then also further to that, I think this network upgrade or the, you know, the merge that's happening as well. But I think in the future will help with um, gas fees as well. Hello from Serbia. Hello. Welcome. Um, uh, did you see every person is a little bit more confident by being bearish and bullish? Yeah, you're going to get this a lot. You're going to get a lot of people who are confident in one way or the other. Now, I'm confident uh, that Bitcoin is going to do really well in the future. Am I confident right now? Not really at the moment. I mean, again, as I mentioned, September is a very bearish month for Bitcoin. Um, but in the long term, yeah, I'm very confident and also bullish that Bitcoin is going to do really well. But, you know, it, it's really the time frame effectively what, uh, what you need to be you know looking into as well. So uh, I've got a, a comment down here from Mark. Uh, Mark Cooper saying, Utrust is built on the Elrond network blockchain. Yeah, I think that was a recent thing that they partnered with. They, they partnered with Elrond, uh, which is a cool thing. Yeah, the point I was trying to make there is that most cryptocurrencies out there are built around or can be transacted upon uh, the Ethereum blockchain, which again, if Ethereum does well, then most of the altcoins tend to do well. Let's say Ethereum's blockchain were to be paused in any way. That is not a good thing for, uh, for anybody, especially uh, the altcoins that are out there um okay thoughts on plutus they're coming to the usa so a lot of payment solutions are coming to the usa so for example as i mentioned you trust um you trust the latest news for them is that they've actually got a, a potential they're, they're looking to break the american market it's the same also with um with plutus as well uh plutus are trying to break the american market because they are a little bit different the way that america uh, certify their uh, well, their companies over there so if you're certified over there if you can operate over there that is a big thing and i think that's what many payments uh, payment solutions are trying to do um i went to the states earlier this year went to texas um with my girlfriend we went to uh texas we also went to tennessee we drove from tennessee down to uh mississippi then alabama and then to new orleans um at the end of the the road trip that we did um and yeah we we used uh we used a few payment solutions so we used um, apple pay from time to time but most of the times we were out there we used cash um and i believe also in the states if you um if you have a job you're paid by check or you pay by cash in post uh which you compare it to uh to europe is actually quite far behind so yeah i think that i think there's a big reason as to why uh the likes of plutus the likes of utrust and many others are trying to break the american market and that's just actually quite ironic when you think about it when america is the only country in the world that is suing ripple labs which i'll get on to later on as well so do comment down below your thoughts and opinions on that so there's a lot of big stuff as well i'm just going to refresh um so i usually have a separate screen next to me so i can read the comments um so i'm just going to refresh the stream and get there as well get to live Okay, um, in Nashville, Tennessee here. Well, thank you very much, Blake. Um, yeah, no, uh, yeah, my girlfriend and I, we really, really enjoyed Nashville. We're definitely going to come back as well. Uh, really cool vibe. And also uh, separate to all of that as well uh, with Nashville um, is, uh, oh, there's this place that we, we had some, some fried chicken. It was called um, Hattie Bee's. Really enjoyed Hattie Bee's. Great fried chicken over there. Uh, really enjoyed it. And, and the crinkle cut fries, you can't get any better than that so yeah i think we definitely would love to go back to nashville and explore that sort of area that part of uh, that part of the world really do love it over there okay uh someone's asking about uh chilies and also uh ftm i will talk about uh small coins later on in the stream um and also any uh, any suggestions you have uh for me to talk about any sort of old coin suggestions uh, i want to cover again I'll, I'll talk about more later on in the stream but i've got them noted chilies and also uh and also ftm Blake talking about yeah it's fire yeah uh, Hattie B's is definitely fire yeah well I will talk about definitely we'll talk about chilies later on so I'll have that noted down um, and I'll talk about chilies as well well I believe we have talked about it on the channel before um, so it's currently ranked 22 and I'll get back to that as well so I have that as well over there awesome so XRP let's talk about XRP um, yeah a lot of stuff happening for it I mean you have the SEC Ripple Labs case I believe a former controller of the uh, United States, he did say that it could end some form of settlements the other day on a news channel. So that was a big thing. Um, the most likely route this will go down will be uh, it will go into some form of settlements. So um, you know, Ripple Labs uh, and the SEC will have some form of settlements where Ripple will pay a fine or a fee of about, let's say, a million, potentially even a billion dollars. 
anywhere between a million and a billion is my sort of is my prediction. So Ripple Labs will pay a fine, most likely if the, if this settles. Ripple Labs will pay a fine of anywhere between a million and a billion dollars. And for that amount, for that amount, Ripple Labs will be granted, or XRP will be granted a non security status. So it'll be seen as a commodity and not a security. So that is also uh, a big thing, not only for XRP, but also for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and every other single cryptocurrency that's out there. Uh, because again, as I mentioned, XRP, Ripple Labs, um, United States is the only country in the world to sue Ripple Labs over the fact that this could potentially be a security. Every other country in the world don't see this to be the case. And that is a big thing. Um, so if this is solved, then I do think we're going to be seeing a ripple effect, so to speak, on other cryptocurrencies as well. Um, another thing I want to mention as well when it comes to XRP is, um, yeah, it will be, I think I think we're going down the path of settlement here, but I think also in terms of its deployment, the XRP network deployment, I think that's going well already, but I think we'll continue to expand further to that as well. Um, and then also, I think we should also recognize that, uh, you know, XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever cryptocurrency you're a big fan of, you know, it is also a completely new and separate uh, asset class. It's a cryptocurrency. It's not precious metals. It's not a stock. It's not a share. It's not uh, a bond. It's not real estate. It is effectively its own thing in its own right. So you're seeing a lot of countries, a lot of uh, regulators trying to get to grips to regulating these uh, these cryptocurrencies and i think we're seeing some teething this is part of that the ripple labs uh, versus sec lawsuit is a part of this teething process of regulators trying to get to grips with this but eventually we're going to be see seeing something that will be good we'll eventually see uh, the light at the end of the tunnel i see the light at the end of the tunnel i see that green light effectively happening next year and i think we'll also give the green lights to institutions who are eager you know, they're not turning away. They're not turning their heads away from Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. They're eager to get involved into crypto, into Bitcoin, into Ethereum, into XRP itself. They just want to have that green light and that, you know, th that full uh, transparency that what they're doing is perfectly legal. And right now, it's a little bit of a, a, a Wild West. The Wild West is starting to set um, on the, the Wild West. Well, not, the sun is starting to set on the Wild West of finance, which is crypto. It's going to be getting into a bit more regulated going forward. Um, so BlackRock uh, going into Coinbase, that is also a big thing. That is a massive way of uh, of, of institutions getting involved into crypto. Um, so that is also a big thing. So let's talk about uh, XRP, what's happening with it. And do comment down below, where do you think uh, where, where do you think this Ripple SEC case is going? Do you think it's going to be settled? Do you think they're going to lose or win? Do comment down below your thoughts and opinions. So we've got about 93 of you guys watching right now. We're going for about 30 minutes. We're going to go for another uh 20 to 30 minutes and uh, we'll call it a day there but again i will go through some of the suggestions you talked about earlier in the stream uh, so again do comment down below uh, any thoughts and opinions you may have if you liked the stream if you liked the video make sure to leave a like again it's very much appreciated if you're new here don't forget to subscribe to grid busy today and um, we bring a stream like this to you every single week we do two streams a week, two live streams a week. So one on Monday and one and also on the Thursday. Um, and it's a great way to interact with you guys as well because it's, it, it, it's what makes it worth it really at the end of the day. So Binance calls the XRP ledger the first major blockchain to be certifiable or certifiably carbon neutral. Um, so, okay, it's sort of a buzzword these days when it comes to carbon neutral, net zero, all that sort of stuff. I get the point. I get sort of, uh, you know, it's a good thing. Uh, okay, cool. But uh, yeah, it is actually quite energy efficient when it comes to other uh, blockchains that are out there. Um, Ripple also continues overseas um, with the expansion with uh, Tranglo to the UAE. So that is also a big thing. Um, so regardless of what's happening uh, in the United States at the moment with the Ripple SEC case, um, there is also um, the fact that Ripple continues uh, to deploy their network across the world. Um, so recently, Brad Garning House was seen in Brazil talking about what's happening with their ODL, so their on-demand liquidity uh, solution to not only the United Arab Emirates, but also um, expanding again into Brazil. That is a big thing. So Ripple um, shook hands with Tranglo to spread its on-demand liquidity uh, solution to the United, well, United Arab Emirates. That's also a good business solution as well, um, probably quite tax efficient over there as well. So yeah, there's a lot of good reasons as to why they're doing business over there. And then also in Brazil, 
you know that uh, apparently two thirds of the world is unbanked so they don't have access to a bank account and that is a big thing especially in today's world especially with what we're going through right now um you know to have access to a bank account means you have great social mobility um to go from not having a bank account not being able to interact with local goods and also services to be able to have access to that is a big thing um and i think if we get there you can create these micro economies in developing nations across you know, south america parts of africa and also parts of southeast asia if you're going to be seeing that development happen it's going to be great for the economy going forward because right now we need as much good news as we can get for the economy because it's not looking good for anybody especially in parts of the us europe and also china at the moment so there's a lot of things ha that's happening uh with with the economy and how it's affecting everything else so it's a big thing so um i also want to cover strategies you know what is your strategy right now with bitcoin and do comment down below what is your strategy right now when it comes to bitcoin crypto investing saving what are you doing because i'd love to know what you guys are doing right now we're you know making sure that we can actually survive through these next two you know two years a year a year and a bit two years when it comes to the energy crisis um, when it comes to inflation interest rates we're just trying to find a way forward so what we're doing here at crypto busy is saving uh, we're putting aside um, a bit of a fund we're, you know creating that as well um and then also investing in some cryptocurrencies so we're still dcaing but we're also making sure that we have something on the side to just cushion us because we don't want to be in a situation where we have to close down operations so it's difficult for a lot of companies that are out there um and also for a lot of people as well so i'd love to know like what are your what are your strategies what are you doing right now are you investing in bitcoin are you going hard into bitcoin right now are you putting a lump sum are you not doing at all are you staying away from investing are you saving your money into a bank account and if so what interest rates are you getting on your bank account is it better than inflation probably not so it's a bit weird for everybody at the moment it's this weird stage for older people at the moment you know what are you doing with your uh, cryptocurrency so again this article i'll leave it leave for you guys as well so you can check it out five crypto investing strategies for a market downturn um you know, consider buying the dip uh, dollar cost averaging as well which is a big thing um, and then also evaluate opportunity to diversify your portfolio so don't be 100 exposed to cryptocurrency it is not a good thing and then also identify panic selling panic selling is a big thing um, and it's a big thing for a lot of people who are new to crypto you know you see all these gains are being made and if you're investing more than you're willing to lose that is not the way to go about investing if you're investing more than you're willing to lose you're investing money that you actually need to live to survive as much as crypto is the future and everybody loves that you know it's not fun for anybody um and i think we have to be aware of that um you know when you see that situation of uh you know crypto is, is the future you know in the real world right now you know you have to still pay with cash you have to stay still pay with fiat um, and that is with your energy bills when it comes to clothes most things that are out there there are a few you know things here and there incentives to use cryptocurrency but it's not the same thing at the moment so it's a big thing so do comment down below what you're doing with that so got someone saying that they're hodling everything waiting for some damn movement in the market it's been stale for three months now it has been stale i do agree with you guys it has been stale for the past three months it hasn't been fun at all if we have to go some monthly charts or the monthly returns uh for ethereum i mean look at that we had one we had quite a few red candles look at that this has been 2020 2022 has been this it's been look at that first of december first of january it's just been red it's going down this is on the theorem's price actions the monthly cat so each candle represents one month so red in january a bit of green bit of recovery in february going into april and then just red from april up until that so that that quarter or well, that those three months going from april all the way up until june was just not fun at all so we're seeing a bit of a recovery there we could be seeing a bit of recovery going back to three thousand dollars by the time we get to maybe the end of this year and that would only be if it is the end of this year so um yeah it's it's we'll have to see what happens with that so yeah anyway um yeah ethereum's price action is affected by also bitcoin as well so that's also something for wherever guys um and then also uh shorted uh chilies at 26 cents 25x on bit gets is this okay to talk about shorting on this channel or is every, is anyone bullish um okay so i want to talk about chilies because that is also a suggestion from you guys as well you want me to talk about chilies I'm, I'm happy to talk about it so it's currently ranked 41 at the moment any news on it recently and it's quite some times so i've actually talked about uh uh chilies uh fundamentals let's have a look at this this is from uh, about uh, from yesterday actually so where's the price headed it's price action chilies founder alexandre has talked about um their intention to stop utilizing the ethereum blockchain to launch their fungible and non-fungible tokens and replace it with their own native chain good news i like to see this um okay 
we don't have to rely forever only on the ERC20 and the ERC71 uh, equivalent. They want to have their own blockchain. That is good. We want to see stuff like that. So that makes me feel bullish. I like that. But that is bullish for the long term. I'm not bullish for the short term on Chili's, but bullish for the long term. So whenever I see news about this, this gets me excited for what's happening with a particular cryptocurrency. If a cryptocurrency has their own blockchain, if they have their, if they built in-house their own blockchain and they haven't piggybacked off the Ethereum blockchain, that is a big thing. It puts them in a very good competitive edge for crypto. Now, as much as it is good to use the Ethereum blockchain, it's a great in, it's a great starter to get involved in crypto and uh, you're sort of an easy cost-effective way of launching your token. Great, do it, fine. But if you want to be competitive, if you want to be the best, you need to have your own blockchain because that is where you can control not in a centralized way where you can control everything that's happening all the developers can work in-house and it's kind of like when with apple for example apple they do all of their hardware and their software in-house uh, and so they have full control over the process now yes okay the screens are usually made by samsung but a great example is when Apple made the switch from using Intel chips to the M1 chip and to the also um, their own uh, ARM chip. That was a big thing for Apple. It's the same thing sort of equivalent when it comes to Chili's, when it comes to any cryptocurrency that is trying to create everything in-house. They have full control in that sense. That does come with a downside as well, because if they do everything in-house, then they're only dependent on themselves. And if they're only dependent on themselves, then things can implode very, very quickly. So that is also something to be aware of as well when it comes to a cryptocurrency that does everything in-house. So just be aware of that as well. Um, so uh, I've got a comment here saying die shillies. Okay, a lot of people are very polarized on this. And when it comes to any cryptocurrency, there's always, there's always going to be a community that is also very passionate about a cryptocurrency, such as the XRP army and people who are very... Um, or people are not fan of uh, XRP at all. And it's the same with the Bitcoin maximalists. Everyone who's a, everyone you know who's a Bitcoin maximalist says that every other altcoin is just not going to work. It's just not going to be the case. But uh, yeah, there you go. Um, I've got a comment here saying, the new profile pic on YouTube is that your life partner. I mean, not... <laughs> Not my life partner, but uh, you know, we are uh, Josh and I. We are friends. We've uh, we've known each other for years now. I mean, we have uh, a very similar birthday, so our birthday is about two days apart. Uh, we were born in the same hospital, but we didn't know each other back then. Um, and uh, we went to the same school at a young age. And um, when I was about ten years old, I moved away from a different into a different county, uh, but we still stayed in touch. Um, and then from that, we, we were always interested in creating a YouTube channel. We were always create, interested in finance as well. So we started our journey into uh, uh, Forex, looking into uh, the pound against the dollar. And then also from that sparked our interest in Bitcoin and then eventually created the, uh, the Crypto Busy channel. So that is also a quick synopsis of um, both of us in the profile picture there. Let's talk about what's happening uh, with... Uh, okay, so I've got a question here or a comment here saying TA, please. Yeah, I'm more than happy to do a bit of TA. Um, just again some requests on which you know, altcoins want me to do some ta on very more than happy to talk about that but then also this this live stream is more dedicated towards the fundamentals and joshua also do a, a live stream on a monday dedicated to more towards the the technicals as well um a comment here saying very informative so thank you very much um yeah uh, chilies is my kryptonite coin i stay away from it too much of a whale coin so that, that's the thing as well. I mean, I don't know the ins and outs, the full ins and outs of what's happening with Chili's, but again, that's a big thing if they are creating their own blockchain. And then also on top of that, uh, if they are a coin that's heavily impacted by whales, then that's also something to be aware of as well. Uh, yeah, XRP, that's also a big thing. Um, so do comment down below your um, any any requests that you have for me. We've got 100 people watching right now. So again, thank you to each and everyone who is watching right now. Very much appreciate it. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and also share this with your friends and family. Very much appreciate it. So low cap coins. Okay. More than happy to talk about low cap coins. More than happy to talk about the coins that we're interested in right now. More, to talk, uh, more than happy to talk about uh, Zilliqa, you know, Utrust. So just to go through a bit of a list here. So let's just go through this. So Zilliqa. Zilliqa is a cryptocurrency that we're big fans of um, and uh, continues to do a lot of good moves in the space for the time being. You know, they are in the... Uh, you know, they're, they're in the, the metaverse space. They made that move recently. That was a big thing for Zilliqa. Any old coin that I'm not going to talk about, any old coin that is out there at the moment is impacted by Bitcoin's price. So right now, if you see an old coin, you love it. Most of the times, nine times out of 10, it is impacted by Bitcoin's price. And most of these are down from the year highs compared to last year. 
Um, so that is a coin that we love uh, to talk about, and also the ones we ha we hold as well. U Trust is one that we've held we've held for quite some time, and we continue to hold as well. Um, again, obviously it is XRP. I like to talk about XRP a lot. V Chain is another one. V Chain is a coin that um, again we continue to load up on as well, solving a lot of issues in the supply chain logistics, and um, those are the top ones there. Okay, people are also talking about uh, you know, low cap coins. I will, I will more than happily create a video talking about low cap coins. But I think if you look at the way the market has gone over the past six months, even for this whole year, really, for this whole 2022, um, any old coin that's in the top 100, top 200 right now that we're looking at, the way that we predict things that are going, again, it's not a certainty, but any cryptocurrency that's in the top 10, top 100 is severely undervalued. If it has a great team, great white paper, it ticks all the boxes. It's if, if it's a solid uh, project and it's not a mean coin, it's not a you know a bad coin or in any sort of sense, then it will tend to do well and will survive uh, in the next bull run. And I think we'll do crazy, crazy returns in the next bull run. So, you know, my best bet to anybody who's getting new into crypto would be to you know get involved in a bit of Bitcoin, a bit of Ethereum, um, and and look into what's happening with elsewhere as well. But again, we're not financial advisors. This is not financial advice at all. But again, have a look at all coins out there that you know closely align what you, what you know and what you think is an industry that's going to continue to grow as well. Again, I'm more happy to talk about the the low cap coins, and I'm sure there are loads out there that are doing really good stuff. We're going to continue continue to do some more research behind the scenes on on these, uh, you know, because there's about twenty thousand, nearly twenty one thousand cryptocurrencies out there on the market. Not all of them will survive. Okay, that's the big caveat when it comes to uh, you know trading at all. When it comes to trading uh, cryptocurrency, when it comes to altcoins and low cap coins specifically, not all of them will survive. So we have to look into ones that again have a great team behind it, have a great uh, you know roadmap as well and continue to deliver on their roadmap. If they have a roadmap and they don't deliver on their promises, then that's not good at all. I think we've learned our lesson from algorithmic stablecoins. So any stablecoin that's an algorithmic stablecoin, I would potentially stay away from. And then also the uh, the sister coin that goes with that. Again, stay away from those you know, sorts of coins. Um, yeah, but there are going to be some, like for example, look, this is you know, 409. I, again, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be getting involved in quack richquack.com okay so when and and uh, I, I don't mean this lightly guys when you ask us to look at low cap altcoins these are not the old, low cap altcoins that you should be investing in don't don't get involved in richquack.com okay look at that price that's ridiculous um what else is there i mean that's just insane look at that 44 this is not even this is not even six one billion. This is like in trillions or quadrillions. That's ridiculous. It's not the case. So, but most of these things are most of these coins out there. That's in the top whatever in the top twenty thousand altcoins are ones. I mean, you know, Meta Hero. That's a great example of an altcoin that is good. But that's ranked four hundred and seventy five. So that's, if that's an altcoin that uh, you're interested in, it is low cap. Okay, this is one that I, that we've uh, held before in the past, and uh, it's one that we continue to talk about on this channel as well. Meta Hero is a great project. It's a low cap coin and uh, one that we'll talk about again in the future. But there are lots of others out there. There's a lot of noise out there that we need to get away from. So it does require a bit of uh, research on our end, and we'll continue to do that. We'll definitely do that as well for you guys. Um, and I will make a video again in the future to talk about low cap gems. But again, I understand as well that the way the market has gone is not good. I don't want to be in a position where uh the market as it is right now has been and, and it, it has tanked okay now would not be the right time i think uh morally in any sort of say to say here are some low cap old coins great invest them when most people are being affected by what's happening with the energy crisis the lost cost of living crisis as well people are a bit confused as to what to do with their money and that's a big thing so we don't want to be in a position where we say here are some great old coins to invest in they're going to have a thousand x potential you know th that you're sort of chasing a, a dream there so if we are going to make a low cap gem uh, altcoin video we'll do it in the way and in the light of here are some ones that we think are good projects and we'll continue to talk about but don't invest your life savings into it don't invest more than willing to lose don't over leverage yourself but this is something that um, you know have altcoins that are, are good for the long term Okay, so this is not a, a six month thing or even a one month thing. This is a, a multi year thing, and that is also a big thing. So, once I think we have found a way forward when it comes to people's uh, getting through this crisis we're in at the moment, when it comes to investing, 
then we're more than happy to talk about it in the sense of like these have these potentials but we're more than happy to also to make a video talking about um the a low cap altcoin video more than happy to make that but uh, again i don't want to come across as like a moon boy or anything like that that's one thing that this channel does not want to do is be like a moon boy channel we want things to be realistic and realistic what's happening in the world right now and, and right now a lot of people are uh you know suffering financially so it's a big thing okay um so people are asking to talk about uh so someone's saying waiting for the low cap gems video again we'll talk about that as well and we'll make a video of that in the future uh thank you for the hard work thank you very much for watching and being part of the crypto busy family very much appreciated um someone asking to do ape coins so ape coin itself uh let's have a look at ape coin so ape coin currently ranked 36 this is i believe the board ape uh yacht club um so they've had a massive success over the past year I believe the last or the latest stuff, again, we don't particularly talk about an ape coin, but we haven't really talked about it in the past. South Korea may levy up to six, uh, 50% uh, gift tax on crypto airdrops under current law. Okay. Uh, assessing whether ape coin investors should consider aping in now. Uh, I don't know what the latest news is on ape coin, but I think it's just really one of those ones where I think for the culture of uh, crypto, will always have its space in there. It's kind of like how, um, you know, Ethereum was have its place in the, in the culture, always, you know, have Bitcoin will have its place in the culture of crypto. Uh, it, it's always going to be one of those things. So I think for yourself, if you're interested in meme coins and uh, other ones that have sort of a, a wider sense of community, Acoin is just one of those coins. And I think we'll continue to do well in the future. But right now it's also heavily impacted by Bitcoin's price. I will do some more research on ApeCoin and uh, go come back to you guys whether it's actually worth investing or not. Um, but yeah, uh, it's just one of those ones. Okay. Um, well, uh, let's have a look here. Any other any other requests or comments uh, you have for you have for me? Uh, please comment down any thoughts and opinions. I just want to go back to what's happening here. Yeah. So becoming a millionaire with passive trading. So this also um, is is coupled with strategies. Again, you're not going to become a millionaire overnight when it comes to crypto. I think we've all learned that very very quickly. It, it takes a long time, and you know I think with the, with the introduction of also inflation. There's going to be more millionaires created through inflation as well. But then also at the same time, it's a it's a big thing. You know, we're talking seven figures. And it's just one of those things where, you know, I think a million seconds is 11 days and then like a billion seconds is like 31 years, something like that. So it is an unfathomable amount of, of, of money to become a millionaire. And I think it's just one of those ones where it takes a lot of time. Um, you know, we've been in this game for about, uh, a long time we're, we're, you know, we're not near there at all so it takes a long time to get involved in that but you have to have a lot of capital already set up to get involved um and, and get you know get that sort of you know millionaire passive trading um but uh, yeah, it's just one of those things it takes a long long time um so if anyone has that sort of uh, short-term perspective please get that out of your mind we need to get into sort of the, the long-term perspective so yeah, I just want to go back to this. Um, yeah, Elon Musk in McDonald's. This is a, a, a text to image AI generated image. Um, and we've seen the memes recently um, on Twitter and where, and where else as well. You know, they, they're funny. They're really cool. And, you know, this is a good sort of a bottom indicator, I guess you could say, that someone's actually managed to do this. But they're getting better in quality. They're getting much better in quality um compared to the memes i've seen recently now yes it's still funny because i mean that's clearly not elon musk but you know it's elon musk right but and, and that's clearly not elon musk but you know it's elon musk and it does look freaky it does look a little bit weird and that's why it's a bit funny but yeah no it's uh the the way that this is going to go it's going to get better quality uh, the, the over the years the quality of these images will get better and that means anybody can type anything. And especially with the way that you see some media hysteria recently, that's not going to look good at all. So this is like, the, is, you get into the realm of deep fakes as well. And that's not fun at all. So just one of those ones. But anyway, guys, uh, thoughts about Filecoin. So okay, I'll just talk about Filecoin as well. And then we'll wrap things up for today's stream. Um, but thank you to each and everyone who's watched. Um, yeah, really appreciate um, you guys joining. Because yeah, it's, it's good fun. We really like doing these streams with you guys. It's a great sort of instant in, in reaction and interaction with you guys. Uh, and it's yeah, it's great fun. We really do enjoy doing it. So um, yeah, uh, we'll bring this to you every single Monday and also Thursday. If not, we'll let you guys prior. Uh, we'll let you guys know uh, prior to when we uh, do the live stream. Uh, so a Farcoin is a decentralized storage system and aims to store humanity's most important information raised. Okay. Cool. Peer-to-peer -peer system. Proof of space time. 
Okay, this is something I need to look to more information. But I mean, again, if they're taking information from the real world and putting it onto the blockchain, that's an amazing thing. I like to see that. That's a real world use case. If that's the case, if that is the situation with Filecoin, amazing. Real world use case, that's a big tick in the box for me because that shows that a cryptocurrency is trying to solve a real world issue and big data is a real world issue that needs to be solved. We have all of this data that we put out there. You know, your age, uh, your location, um, you know, what you do for work, all that sort of stuff. It's information. Uh, and again, you know, I, I wear a smartwatch from time to time. It tracks my heart. It tracks everything else, like my breathing, all that sort of stuff. That's information that can be used, you know, really well. But right now, it's just out there. How do you utilize that information? Then I think a, a thing like Filecoin, also Chainlink as well, aims to solve those issues. And it'll be a big thing as well going forward. So uh, I just want to comment. I just want to comment on that as well. So uh, love from Pakistan. Love from the UK, guys. Um, and thank you very much. Yeah, um, so thank you to each and everyone who joined the stream today. Again, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I very much appreciate it, each and every one of you. We're 210,000 well, 210, members strong. Leave a like on this stream. Leave a like on this video if you're watching it uh, recorded. And uh, yeah, very much appreciate each and every one of you guys. Um, thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.